Oh my god. It takes so long to be a It's Carmine for Portman, Switzerland. So the Yay! boogeyman is there. <laughs> I missed you. <laughs> it's the Carmine show. Mom, mom, mom. We're, I promise you we will be the first guest on your TV show. Yes. When you, oh my goodness. When you host that show, you just tell the producers yes. to send a jet and we will be the first guest I'll fly on commercially. The show. I'll fly commercially. I won't, but that's okay. Oh my God. That is amazing. I will definitely make use of that. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> so the first question for this time, Judy. Uh, so pretty much all the characters in the movie say that evil has to end tonight because of course, in order to be able to move on in life, we will have to face our biggest fears. And I was wondering, what would you say has been the biggest fear that you had to overcome as an artist in order to make yourself get there where you are today as an actor? Um, I think uh, I would say as an artist and, and sadly as a woman, the, the fear of being ugly, the fear of playing roles that are like not being attractive. Like mm. I think, you know, being a a supporting more character actor, you end up like, I'm not always, I can't always try to look my best because the people I play aren't necessarily, mm -hmm. I think it's hard, you know, when you're a woman in this business, like you're expected to look a certain way and, you know, that's not always realistic when you're an actor. And so sometimes like right. crying, you know, crying is ugly, screaming is ugly, like running can be ugly, like to, to put your to make yourself like physically vulnerable, I think has been something as an artist that I've learned to overcome. Wow. Wow, yeah, that is yeah. really oh, good. <laughs> and, and, and Jamie, I, I love uh, when Tommy tells Laurie that he wants to protect her just the way she protected him like 40 years ago when he was a boy. Uh, and I was wondering if you ever if you ever uh, wanted to protect young actors or young artists you've been working, you worked with in the past few years, you know, just the way uh, somebody hopefully protected you like over, few, over 40 years ago when you started yeah. off in Hollywood as a young actor. Again, deep dive question. Okay, I'm telling you, <laughs> literally, I can't even with you. Seriously. Um, I have had the privilege of working with young actors. Kyle Richards was eight. She remembered eight years old when exactly. she made Halloween in 20 in 1978. She was eight years old and she remembers that when we finished the movie and they finished her on the movie, it's called a, a after wraps out and the entire crew claps for the performance. I, she says I, she remembers that I picked her up and carried her physically. She wrapped her legs around me and I carried her back to her trailer, you know, where her mom was waiting and when we were reunited in the twin in this new movie she walked on set and she goes do you remember and i said yeah bring it and she ran toward me and jumped up and wrapped her legs around me because Aww. you know and she was eight and i worked with elijah wood when he was a younger when he was young i you know i've worked with a bunch of young actors and i do think it's your responsibility even josh hartnett and michelle williams in the h2o movie they were young you know actors in movies um I'm and not, I'm and not. even even macaulay culkin and anna klumsky on my girl now that i remember i mean i do feel it's my responsibility to try to help them i i also was raised by a very professional woman. My mother, Janet Lee, was raised in the studio system and there is a protocol you follow and you are never late and you arrive early and you, you offer to help and you write thank you notes and you give crew gifts and you remember that you are the mostly the higher paid person in the room and therefore you need to remember that everybody is working you know, harder than you and getting paid less. And I do feel like I have tried to share that with young actors. I've worked with a couple of young actors who were little dickheads. And I have reprimanded them without being maternal. But I have said, you know, that's not a good idea. I think you need to do whatever, whatever. And I will tell you one thing. There was one story that uh, uh, a very big comedian, um, I did a movie with, uh, a couple people and one of these young stars of the movie was a very big shot young comedian 
and the director of the movie, he was the guy was late for a rehearsal with the rest of the actors. And yes. I, remember, I remember when he showed up, um, we were waiting like 20 minutes. And I remember the director took him aside and said to him, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. I don't care about anything. If you're mm -hmm. ever late again on my set, you will be fired on the spot. Wow. And you now need to go into that room and apologize to every single person who's been sitting there. And I remember it happening. And I remember thinking like, yeah, daddy. So I do feel like I instill a little sense of no complaining. You know, I, it's, it's, I think that is my job. I'm a right. head cheerleader. I'm like head cheerleader. Yeah, but you also stand up for people who don't necessarily have a voice to, to use, and uh, that is appreciated. And I'll say I'm not such a young actress, but she has definitely, if I've ever sent a text, had a question, needed a thing, no one responds faster. I, I'm pretty quick on the job, wow. I will tell you. Oh, right. <laughs> the reason is, is because of this invention. It's called a bandolier. <laughs> I could sell them right now. You buy them for I, I buy them, but I'm telling you, it's a phone case that you wear yeah. around your body. And I'm telling you right now, a blessing and a curse. Uh, it's on me at all times. And uh, the, the emails I've been getting because I've been in this room here for hours and hours and hours and hours days. now for a few days, my husband texts just question marks <laughs> because they're so used to me responding to everything so yeah. fast. Yeah. Yes, and right, I'm right. A lot of people like, wait, where are you? Are you okay? I've had a lot of people ask if I'm okay because they know <laughs> me. And so I'm not responding because I've been working. Yeah. And because anyway. Because you kind of disappeared in a way for them. I've totally disappeared. <laughs> hours and hours. You know, we've been, I've been here since 4.30 this morning and I'll be here until eight o'clock tonight. And you know, my people, that's like a day, that's like being on a jet where you, but you can actually text people on the jet now. Not Can a you? jet. I, I don't have a jet. No, I don't have a jet. I'm saying any plane. Oh, okay. You can get Wi-Fi. I know, and I always try to say like, oh, I didn't have Wi-Fi, and people are like, yes, yeah, you, you did. Do. You had Wi-Fi. You You're just, just lying. You didn't want <laughs> to be available for five hours. Jamie, Judy, thank you so much. I have to I wrap love up. You. You're our absolute favorite. I know you're, you're our, our favorite. absolute favorite. You're gonna get a box of of oh best God, interviewer ever from Jeff Shear at Universal. So, and when you get oh your talk goodness. show, we will both be on it. You're so good at your job. Thank you. You're a thank lovely you. person. Just let me tell you one thing. You know, I've been trying for so like for over 15 years to get an interview with the both of you. You know, I've tried so hard for so oh. long. So it feels very surreal that we were finally able to make this happen. So I want to thank you very, very much for your time today, for sharing your stories. I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed talking to you. Seriously, thank well, you yes, so much. Yes, we can. Yeah, we you know can. what? <laughs> we can because we've received it from you. Thank you can't be who you are without actually giving that to people. So you're quite extraordinary.